Yeah? I don't know what my cat wants. Okay, so today is Sunday. It's Easter Sunday. So happy Easter, I guess. I have here with me a cookie. It's an Easter bunny cookie. It says flour has gluten. This has been the most uh, depressing revelation I've had. That flour has gluten. I also have a uh, chocolate egg. I think the box is kind of cute. I told my friend I eat it on Sunday because she gave this to me. It smells interesting. Yeah, this too. So for the past two weeks, I haven't exactly met my reading goals, but. That was because I was preoccupied with another book. I put in a hold for the Bridgerton series on Libby and initially it told me that I will only get it in like 6 months. So I was like okay I'm prepared to wait that long. But then because I had put in a hold for uh, several copies, I managed to get uh, access to the one that had the most number of copies which had the Netflix series cover. So. That's only book one though, like the one I wanted to get was uh, three books in one. But uh, that one was really really popular and on top of that, the older editions had a really really long wait time. It just wasn't practical. So I started reading The Duke and I and actually like it was recommended to me by my friend. She said that she had been reading it all this time. She enjoyed the series before you know there was like a Netflix adaptation of it and she told me that like it's very different from the drama I watched the drama uh, I don't recommend you watch it with your parents but yeah it was kind of uh, enjoyable I kind of let it play in the background as I do work so I was quite surprised by how different it was from the book because as I was reading the book uh, Daphne just wasn't quite so uh, helpless and the book didn't have quite so many real life societal problems like uh, the, the misogyny and the oppression wasn't that strong compared to the drama mm. however uh, that, that book aside I did manage to read uh, 4 out of the 5 books I wanted to read so the first is Death Sentences by Kawamata Chiaki this was uh, probably one of uh, the nicest books I've read. I know that the reviews don't portray it in a kind light because like, I think when a book is not linear, people tend to hate on it. And to me, it's not an issue. I feel like if it's not linear, then you just need to keep track of the different threads that are going on. And if you cannot do it, you shouldn't blame the book. Yeah. So just like a, it's a matter of personal incompetence really at this point, I feel lah. So this book was about a poem that... What is my cat doing? Okay, this book is about a poem that had the power to make people slip into a coma and eventually die once you read it. It was written by a man in the 40s. He was living in France and he had connections to all the surreal artists so like Marcel Duchamp and his poem became the stuff of um, that videotape from The Ring you know like the Japanese horror film. Actually that film right it gave me nightmares for years. I constantly have these nightmares where all I see is that man who is like pointing you know that videotape the one where you see it and then 
people die. Yeah, so the poem is something like that, except that they don't just die. It's not because of a supernatural issue. The thing that makes them slip into a coma and then die is that reading this poem allows them to access the fourth dimension, uh, meaning time. So they can uh, have an out-of-body experience, their soul can leave the body, and then they can just transcend. So at one part, of this book you transcend into the future in this future human beings have colonized mars however the colony in mars is uh, run by a dictator and the people in it are rebelling by using this poem to resist escape their present conditions so the poem is like outlawed in the present and in the future not in the past. It's a kind of interesting take on Parisian surrealism. Like, I think if you know a little bit of art history, there is something to interest you in this book. So, I liked it. I just liked it. I don't care what people say. So, this book one. The second one was Sad Cypress by Agatha Christie. It's just a kind of a straightforward murder mystery with a twist at the end kind of Agatha Christie novel. I enjoyed it. I gotta say that I didn't anticipate the ending. I mean the clues were everywhere but it really didn't occur to me. I just kept thinking that it was either she who really did it or it was an accident like her ex-fiancé wanted to poison her and get her out of the way but he accidentally poisoned his paramour. So a lot of Agatha Christie novels are like this. I always think that I'm smart enough to figure it out but I'm not and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Okay, the third, Bluebeard's First Wife by Seong Nan. This is really good. Like I read Flowers of Mood and it was good but it wasn't this good. Like this, every story was crafted with precision. You can just feel it. You can just feel how how much weight each sentence carries. If you read them in isolation, if you just flip to any page and you read them, you'll be like, okay, uh, it seems kind of mundane. But if you read it in its entirety, this mundanity becomes something that inspires dread. Like, as I read it, I just felt nervous. I was like, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? And so that's the kind of feeling that you get when you read the short stories. There are a few here. So so these are this is the contents page. Here there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven stories. I would say that I liked uh, maybe four of them best. I liked uh, Bluebeard's First Wife, which is the second story. I liked Flies. I liked Old Father. I liked uh, On That Green Green Grass. I quite liked Pinky Finger. So, uh, there's more than four. Yeah, so I would say I like about half of them. The other half are good. Just not as memorable, personally, for me. Yeah, I feel that her stories always focus on very ordinary people. So parents who find it hard to love their child, parents who fail their children, husbands who fail their wives, husbands, husbands to be with uh, skeletons in their closet, wives who expect better from their husbands but are put in danger as a result. And when you read it, you're just on the edge of your seat. So I enjoy the experience. Uh, the last physical book that I read for the month is The Game by A.S. Byatt. Um, this is not my first time reading a Byatt novel, so I did have expectations. I expected it to be difficult, and it was. I expected it to be meta, and it was. It was a book about a book to be written. So there are three characters. One is Cassandra. She's a dawn at Oxford. The other one is her younger sister, Julia. She writes novels, so she takes the people in her life and she writes stories that are kind of autobiographical but obviously the people in her life don't take too kindly about it. And then there is Simon. Simon was a man that Cassandra had an attachment to when she was younger but then later on uh, she went off to Oxford and then Simon met Julia and they dated and Cassandra always felt like Julia was always trying to get what she had and basically just hankering after her. However, uh, Julia always felt that Cassandra made all the rules. She made 
rules like you cannot touch my things, you cannot open my door and then she punished Julia for breaking unreasonable rules that she made up. So these two sisters have a very antagonistic relationship and when Simon comes back into the scene after they are both middle-aged and their father dies which made them have to go and attend to the funeral things they almost make amends but they don't in the end, Julia wrote a new book and based her main character entirely off her older sister which obviously is an invasion of privacy and Cassandra who was already kind of high-strung and neurotic to begin with she couldn't take it so she uh, committed suicide Yep. So, so that's what I read. This is my end of March check-in. Work-wise, I'm okay. I'm okay. So, uh, for the upcoming month, I have five, six, seven. I have like seven physical books to read, and I still have half of the Duke and I. So, uh, I'm not so sure what's gonna happen if I can't finish the books on time. I hope that the library will let me renew them. Like maybe if I physically bring the books down then I can renew them because it seems that I can't renew them through the app. Yep. Okay. Today I watched a movie. It's called The Reason I Jumped. It was based on a book written by a 13 year old boy who has autism. He doesn't speak but he wrote a book and he showed the world how he views the world which appended a lot of the assumptions and the stereotypes that people thought about autistic people and autism in general and yeah it was a really good film i cheered up a little bit here and there it's just um there's no flavor to it it's just like cinnamony <laughs> mm, that's all uh, I guess if uh, I'm still alive in two weeks, you'll see me again. If not, you can wait for the end of the month.